Hey guys, what's up? So you're probably wondering why I'm standing like this and why I'm surrounded by all these computer parts and my desk is a mess and I'm, you're so far away and the mic sounds like garbage. Well, today I'm going to show you how to build a gaming PC, or any PC for that matter, but this is not meant to be a super in-depth guide showing you every step and every inch, you know, it's going to show every step, but it's going to not be super in-depth, super close up, because I don't have a cameraman and I don't have nice cameras, but... You could learn how to build a PC from this, but the main point of this is to be a confidence booster. Now, other channels have done this, but I want to do it as well because it looks like fun, and also, why not waste all this stuff? So, basically, a lot of people don't build PCs because they're scared, because they might break something. Well, if anyone's going to break something, it's going to be me. So, I have taken my 7700K 1080Ti, so very expensive parts, gaming PC apart. Now, if this co computer breaks... It's broken. I can't just buy a new one. I don't just have a shelf full of free stuff that NVIDIA sent me for being a shill. So if it breaks, it's broken. This is real risk. And I'm going to take these risks for you guys to show you it's super easy and you shouldn't buy a pre-built because you're scared. You're going to waste money. So I'm just going to build a PC and I'm going to do it casually. I'm going to do it nonchalantly. I haven't built that many PCs. I've built the same PC three times and then Threadripper and that's it. So really, I haven't even built this one like fully. So, I'm just going to build it, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing and how to do it, but you're basically going to be pretty far away the whole time as I'm doing it because I don't have cameraman and stuff, but I thought it's really interesting to just show you guys the steps from far away and just show you guys I'm just going to do it. I'm actually going to pick up the motherboard and do the CPU. This is a really bad idea. So, today, like I said, we're using the 7700K. Normally, they would zoom in on it, but nope, this is 7700K. A um, little bit of thermal paste on it, that's fine. I actually just took this computer apart. Uh, it could already be broken. So, basically, uh, our motherboard for today is the Z270 Pro 4 from ASRock. Uh, a very nice motherboard. It is SLI capable, though, who uses SLI? And I can't afford 2180 Ti's, we all know that. Crossfire, maybe. It does also have its little crossfire thing. And, uh, yeah, crossfire ready at the bottom. But, basically, we've got our LGA 11 something something socket that fits our Intel processor. So basically, how to install a processor? All you do is on the bottom of the processor, you'll see there's a little triangle. Um, there's a tiny little gold triangle you can't see from here. My camera wouldn't even focus on it anyway. It's very tiny, and there's a tiny triangle on the bottom left of this socket, specifically the LGA 11 something something for uh, newer Intel CPUs. This is actually a few years old. This is 7th gen, we're up to 9th gen, but that's fine. So basically, we're going to line up that gold triangle with the little triangle on the bottom left of the socket. If you're looking at the motherboard this way, it is the left side if you're looking at it vertically uh, with this CPU socket towards the top. Basically, you just very carefully line that up and insert the CPU. Careful not to drop it because these pins... Now, this is the part where people are scared because, you know, the socket pins, the CPU, they're very delicate, but you really just carefully drop it in. And if you drop it, return the, return the, <laughs> if you drop it and break a pin on like the motherboard, return it. Be like, it was already broken, <laughs> but you won't trust me. And then you just close that, the retention hatch over it and push down the lever. A little bit of force is required, but just, you know, you want it installed correctly. And boom, we just installed a CPU. Now, if it was broken, it would be broken right now. Now, what do we install next? Well, we have many options, but most people go with the RAM. Uh, depending on if your cooler is too big, but we're using a liquid cooler today, so it will not be a problem. RAM. Basically, DDR4, there's a little niche or slot or hole in the middle-ish, middle-ish of the RAM stick. The DIM, it is called. That is not centered. So you have to make sure you line that up with the little notch on the RAM slot of the motherboard. See, it was backwards. So I flip it around and boom, and just equal force on both sides. And you just push it in until you hear a snap. Same thing for all things. Make sure you've opened the little levers, the latches on, the, on, either, on my motherboard. It's one side. Now, chances are, and it's most likely, I'm using four DIMMs today for 32 gigs of RAM. Most people are using... Uh, You'll be using uh, two sticks of eight for 16. In that case, in most motherboards, you'll use slots two and four, the second one and the fourth one for dual channel. Uh, on mine, I'm using all of them because there's only four slots on consumer grade CPUs. And chances are, if your slots are on the on 
all slots on the same side of a motherboard will be aligned the same. So once you line up the first dim, just make sure all your other dims are facing the same way. You know they're facing the same way because you're using the same dims and they have a sticker on one side. So that sticker will either be facing you or facing away. Very easy. You just shove that in. I'm not even wearing a static bracelet. Anti-static, that's for losers. I'm going to break something. Now, that is installed. So, here's my tip for installing your cooler, which I'm pretty sure is what I want to do next. So, for your cooler, if you're using a consumer-grade GP, uh, GPU, if you're using a consumer-grade CPU, my recommendation is to install the cooler first. Why? Because it is very annoying to install Intel coolers especially. Because they have something called a backplate. If... I lost the back plate. There it is. So my back plate's actually missing a screw. I I don't know if I can find it. Oh no, I don't have one of those. Yeah. So mine's actually missing a screw. But this is a back plate. It goes on the back of your motherboard, and these screws go through the holes in the motherboard. And basically, it is impossible. Like when it's in the case, you can sometimes see it. Uh, depending if there's something behind it, but you really want to install your cooler now. If you're using an air cooler, the steps might be different. You might have a special mounting mechanism. But for liquid coolers, which I always recommend with CPUs, especially Intel CPUs, k especially for that extra oomph of cooling and that nice look. Basically, you just shove these through the holes on the motherboard. Try not to scratch it too much. I say too much because... As I'm saying this, I'm scratching. See, like, see how this could be annoying? But here's the thing. Now I have gravity on my side to help me keep this back plate on. Usually I don't. So then, oh, that's a, we're scratching this motherboard to bits. And just put that flat. Dang it. See, I'm messing up very badly. I've already messed up the back plate. So I'm just going to pick up my motherboard by the ramp slot because I'm crazy. Like I said, this is really just to show you guys, if I can do this, you can. Because I'm so bad at this, because this room is very hot, and I do not like the heat. This computer, if this makes it through, it's approved. If it doesn't, well, you guys got to watch me break a computer. I hope you're happy. Now, now that that's through, we're going to set it on the table. Please, please, please. Like I said, consumer grade, these are the most annoying. This is like the most annoying part. The reason you have to have a backplate is because the CPU socket itself cannot support uh, the weight of a cooler on it. Can I just carry this by the screws? We got it. There we go. So you have to have a backplate on the back so the motherboard is actually holding the cooler. Now, this is the part I almost forgot actually. Do not forget this part. This is the thermal paste part. Where's my thermal paste? Oh, here it is. I have a bag of thermal paste. My recommendation, not sponsored, because why would I be? I have 3,000 subs. No, 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 no one's even watching this video. Is Arctic MX4. It just works. I use it on Threadripper. It just works. Now, there's always an uh, argument about the amount. Just a little bit. Like, cons imagine in your head the amount that you're putting on spreading throughout the CPU. A grain of rice will work because it'll spread out. Just imagine, hey, could this spread across CPU? Never use too little, too much. Shouldn't be a problem unless you're leaking all over the motherboard, but you just don't. <laughs> That's really it. Now, to install your cooler is really, really simple. Basically, you figure out where it's going to be in the case. So this one actually has hoses on this side. And you basically just conceptualize your case. So do I want it like this? Do I want the fans on that side? I think I want the fans... I want the fans on the opposite side of where they are now, right? Remember, yeah, because the fans take air in this side and blow it out that way. So basically, we actually want it like this. So the motherboard is like that. The motherboard is there. It doesn't even matter. Basically, you just okay for this one specifically. It has this kind of back plate, so you just. Really slam it on there. Try to get equal mounting pressure. I actually can't remember how the case works. So basically, you want to take your cooler and very carefully watching the wires. Now, I shouldn't have installed the fans before doing this, but that's fine. And even the fans are actually installed wrong. Basically, you take your cooler and you hit everything on the motherboard with the wires. And you just 
It's really easy if you have a friend to help you. Huh, friends, one of those, right? Oh, he roasted himself because he has no friends in real life. Just his online friends. He only watch him because he gives stuff away. And you just shove it on there. I say shove. You could try being careful. Carefulness. I left the screws on the other side. So basically, you're just while well, holding that on there. Get equal. So the term is equal mounting pressure. Basically, it means so you want to get an even spread of thermal paste across your CPU as best as you can. You could use those spreaders, um, but if you're lazy like I am, there's no way you're doing that. As we just smear it everywhere because we're really bad at this. Wow, equal mounting pressure looks harder and harder every second. It's beginning to look a lot less likely that this is going to work. Some for some reason I'm just not worried. Just not really worried. It's only like my pride and joy gaming PC that I spent eighteen hundred dollars on a year ago. Back when these were literally the top parts. But whatever. I, so I've tightened them with my thumb as much as I can. I'm going to grab my screwdriver. I lost it. I lost it. I'm going to grab my screwdriver and just give them a quick tight, tight, and tight. Make sure that's really on there. Bada bing. Bada bang. We have installed our CPU cooler just like that. Now, before I forget, these fans are on the wrong side, but uh, these fans are on the wrong side, yada yada. Okay, these fans are on the wrong side, so I'm actually going to take off these fans for now. We're going to put them on later when we get in our case. Speaking of our case, we're actually going to get in there now. Now, the reason I say this isn't a full, full build guide is because I already have, for convenience sake, because it's been like this for like a couple months, I already have the power supply inside the case wired up ready to go so I don't have to open the back just to save me time and sanity it's annoying risk-free to just install your power supply so this is why I suggest watching uh, another video like I said this video is good it's if you want to watch this one first to get some confidence or if you want to watch this one later to get some confidence. it's really to get you confident uh, that like if someone doing what I'm doing just nonchalantly unscrewing like you hear me, I built a lot of PCs and I'm general. Like I sound nervous, but it's really because it's just hot in here and I'm tired because I'm 5'9 and 180 pounds. I know these shirts make me look great because they have Bob Ross on them. I really have to sell. I need, I need someone. I need an artist to make me a shirt that's me and Bob Ross. If someone makes that, I won't pay you, but I will, I will give you credit for it because you know I can't afford to pay you. I can't afford to replace this PC, especially if it breaks. That'll be a problem. Um, but no, if, if there's an artist out there looking to make a, uh, me a t-shirt design, um, that's me and Bob Ross. Building a PC. Oh, that's perfect. Or gaming. Me and Bob Ross, either gaming or building PC, uh, something like that together. You will be highly accredited, and if I sell any, you'll get some money. <laughs> now, that's it. So basically, we have our motherboard done. Easy peasy lemon on the pie. Now, time to grab our case. And basically, this is the part where you're not going to see anything. But really, I'm just going to talk to you guys while telling you what I'm doing. And you'll see exactly what I'm doing from like third person. This is what third person sees. Is this GTA 5 in third person? If anyone wondering, I don't play GTA 5 anymore because of all the cheaters. I used to... Okay, look. Turn your case on your side. You grab your motherboard and all the components. Make sure your standoffs are installed. Watch a video on standoffs. Literally watch a whole video just about standoffs. Um, this case has the nipple. Okay. Problem with install. So normally you shouldn't have your power supply just already installed in your case. The reason this is a bad idea is because the wires are going to get in your way. So really it was a bad idea. But like I said, I'm basically doing this like, I don't want to say wrong. I'm doing the steps right. But I'm doing this kind of weirdly you know like out of order weirdly kind of out of whack because i want to show you guys it's not it's not bad it's not a bad process it can be tedious it can be rough it can be scary as all hell on the first time i know when i was building my third for 3500 dollars of pure terror now easy peasy 
just shove it on there. Line it up on the standoffs. Make sure there's nothing under it. I forgot to do that. There's a bunch of stuff under it. Hey, SATA port. All right, SATA. SATA, SATA, SATA is having a good time being all on top of it and stuff. SATA, get out of my motherboard. I need that for my PC. I'm building something out of leather. And I need my PC to work. Copyrighted 2019. Oh, that's a great idea. Uh, copyright this video idea for me. Um, building a PC out of leather. Or doing something with leather. Are we on? Are we on? There we go. And that's on. Oh. Do not forget your I.O. shield in the case. Worst case scenario, you don't install it. Oh, well. But put your I.O. shield in. First thing you do. Like, when you start building pieces, that's the first thing you do. Now, this is my screw tray. Obviously, these aren't old motherboard screws. So, to show you guys how, just how easy it is, I'm going to use three screws. And that's it. Three, because I don't even think I have a fourth. And I'll look for a fourth. But I'm basically going to put a screw. Let's see. See, installing screws is a tedious process, but I'm going to do it here in the... Oh, by the way, this room is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or like 35 degrees Celsius or something like that for all you Celsius. I used to be a person that did Celsius, hence the flag on my wall right there. But I'm currently in Amuka, where we ain't so good with Celsiuses. But, uh... It's like 30, 30 degrees, 30 something degrees Celsius in here. It is very hot. Now you're like, how could it be that hot? It's not even the hot outside. This room is just a hot box. That's really it. There's no air conditioning. The only air conditioner I can have in here is super loud and super not economical. So we don't use that. This is the kind of video that has to have a really good thumbnail because the audio isn't good. So, hold on. Oh, ah. So, the keen-eyed among you wouldn't have noticed this, but I did because I'm crazy. The holes on this case are larger. So, each case has different standoffs, really. Make sure you check which size. Uh, your case will come with, with standoff screws for your motherboard. But basically, they're bas that's the ones that hold your motherboard in your case. And I drop a screw. Lines. This one has larger screws, so I can actually use this screw that I have a bunch of. Perfect. I actually, I realized that too late, and I seized the screw in one of the standoffs on my other case. Seize, to seize a screw means you screwed in so much you can't unscrew it. Uh, and basically, uh, I screwed in so hard that I, I couldn't get it out without getting the standoff with it, which is actually really bad, because standoffs are supposed to be in there tight. But it's not uncommon for that to happen. And uh, that, was, that was definitely interesting. Now, good, we can have more screws, because now, our, finally, our graphics card is actually going to be rescuing our motherboard, and, because our graphics card hasn't actually been installed in an actual, like, position of dangerous in a while. And just like that, did we, did we even screw in all the screws? No, we're going to screw in one more for good measure, but no, we haven't screwed in those screws. Now, if you're buying a new case, I recommend highly... Or any case, really. I recommend highly recommending that you screw in all of the screws on your motherboard. Just in case all of them but one fail. Believe it or not, I can't get this one in. Believe it or not, <laughs> well, of course you believe that because you're hearing it. Believe it or not, I'm pretty sure motherboard, if you screw in like one screw, will probably be alright. I mean, like, it'll be safe-ish. Um, definitely should not screw in only one screw. Never do that. Screw in all your screws. Because that's a smart idea. But if all the screws won't come out, you know, you know you're know, you not bad. I stepped on something. Oh, we broke something. Okay. Whatever. Now, that was surprisingly painless. Um, here's how we're going to do this part. We are going to grab our fans again. I lost them. Um, 
basically, a case like this is very simple. There's a radiator in the front, because I'm using a 240, so it goes in the front. Sometimes they go in the back. I don't recommend that. Basically, you want air to come in the front and go out the back. So, a fan will take in air this way and blow it out that way. The back of the fan, the ugly side, is always the exhaust for a computer fan. This is the intake, this is the exhaust. This is the side, when you're on the front of your case, want to be facing inside. This side, you want to be facing out, so when you look at the case, it looks pretty, and also, so that it, uh, you know, it works. Now, actually, yeah, that's how we're going to do this. So basically, this case does have dust filters, but the way uh, we install this doesn't ex isn't exactly friendly to dust filters. So basically, you just put all your screws in your fan, put one screw in first, take your fan up to your case, make sure you, you know where your wires are going beforehand. I want mine to go right above the radiator. Um, now, just line it up to how you want it to be. Make sure all your screws line up beforehand. Actually, I think this, this is supposed to go like at the top. Perfection. And just ever so ungently because you're me. Really get that fan on there. And just like that, really it takes like two screws, two fan screws through the, the mother, or not the motherboard, through the case, through the whatever the heck this is called, a radiator. And just like that, your radiator's mounted. <laughs> really just like that. Um, You know what? Now, I'll use these fans. Now, these Cooler Master fans are great. They're, it's a, This is a $60 radiator uh, combo, uh, or AIO, it's called, all-in-one liquid cooler. Um, so it's great for the price. Now, I don't personally believe that these fans are the greatest. They sound weird. They're not loud, per se. I mean, they can get loud when, obviously, your 7700K is boiling because you play PUBG. But um, they are good. They're fine. They work. I'm personally not a, a huge fan. I like the look of them. I like that they work, <laughs> but I'm not just I'm not really a fan of the the specific sound they make personally. Um and that their RGB isn't that bright. Guys, RGB makes your computer run faster. Some people are actually going to believe that and get mad at me. It doesn't. I'm a liar. For all the alliance. Actually, we don't want this impeding airflow. We messed this up already. See, guys, we already messed up. You guys were distracting me. Did you see me still recording? Yep. <laughs> this audio is going to be unrecoverable. I mean, I should really be... I, I don't want to say dubbing, because this isn't... You don't dub. But I really should be recording audio to put over this. Um, which I might. But I, I kind of like this kind of... Even though it's unprofessional and it sounds like garbage... I do kind of like this kind of, we're just chatting, and I'm just building a computer. And I'm just showing you guys, it's just easy. Now, of course, some of you might not be thrilled after this. Be like, I'm not more confident. Buy a pre-built 8 gigs of RAM. Um, but, I mean, guys, if this works after what you've seen. Uh, by the way, when taking apart the, um, the motherboard before, because I, I took this apart, because I, I, I have to switch cases anyway, I thought, why not just do it, because I wasn't even planning on taking off the radiator or anything, uh, or cleaning the CPU, or changing the thermal paste, but I thought, hey, I'm taking it apart, might as well make a confidence booster for you guys, but while I was taking it off, I actually, while trying to take it, I dropped the CPU in the socket, that's like the biggest no-no, it's like, no, do not drop it, it will break, you will be suffering for a thousand moons, but, oh well, I'm crazy. And if I can do it, you can do it too. That is break a computer. No. And if this doesn't work, well, I'm still going to post it, but call it something else. I'm going to call it, I broke my gaming PC. <laughs> because that's what I'll be doing. And I'll be crying. Crying because I broke my gaming PC. Boom. A million views immediately. Not clickbait. He said not clickbait, but it was the most clickbait video of 2019. Unsubscribe, unfollow immediately. This guy is a scam. Doesn't even have any double-sided tape. So, double-sided tape, surprisingly enough, is actually one of your friends. Double-sided tape, one of your best friends. Now, your best friend, in terms of cable management, is what we'll talk about. Because I don't have that. So, you should really watch Jay's Two Cents for cable management. He's one of the best, I find, for the management of the cables 
because you will find, you can just look at my desk in any of my other videos, I do not manage cables well. I'm a person that says, if it works, it works, we will do cables later. Let's get the thing working first. What the hell happened here? Oh, this screw has been like messed with. So basically, I can't actually screw it in with this screwdriver. Because it just like, it's too thin. Because the screw has been scratched in the middle so much. I feel bad that like I can't get like different angles. But like I said, I don't have a cameraman. My camera doesn't even have auto stabilization. So it's like if my if I'm holding it, it's very light as well, which actually makes you shake here. If I'm holding it or a cameraman's holding it and they shake a little bit, it'll just you'll just shake the whole screen. You'll just see shakes upon shakes upon shake shacks. And you'll be very sad. And we pulled our bit out. But there we go. And just like that, fans on the front installed. And Basically, we're just going to wire everything up now. Now, the uh, connector, the power connector on your pump, if you have an AIO header on your motherboard, shove that into that. But this motherboard does not because this motherboard is garbage, um, you know, personally. Uh, so you just put it in CPU fan because most some motherboards won't even let you boot without CPU fan plugged into something. And this is one of those motherboards. Three slot, there we go, it's a three pin, you just plug that into it. Even if you have four pin connectors, plug the three pin into it. Now, let's get some CPU power. So this is a two by four CPU power. Like I said, I wish you guys could see this, nothing I can do. Tripod can't even get this close, you wouldn't even see anything, it's too dark. But, just imagine me being super scared while trying to build a computer. Now, actually... I had messed this up before. No, no, I had this right. And you just plug in the 2x4 into the 1x8 slot. It is a 1 EPS into the motherboard. Babushka! Now, what else do we install? USB 3.0. Now, on this case specifically, I have messed up the USB 3.0 beyond beyond recognition but we really need these extra ports I am a VR person I rely heavily on VR as my best friend because um, VR is my best friend as many of you know I love my VR um, so basically we need uh, to plug in both of our fans to chassis fan headers because they are chassis fans. Despite the fact they aren't literally the chassis fans, they are in the radiator, you plug them into the headers called chassis fans. Chassis, chassis, chassarino. Dinner's ready. 24 pin motherboard connector installed. Just like that. Push that in. Snap your motherboard in half. Beautiful. This is probably disgusting from you guys' side. This is such a bad video. I don't care. I love myself. I'm just kidding. I don't. What, what am I saying? Guys, I've gone crazy. I'm... He's... He's bit people. Uh, are these long enough? Oh my god, they are. Beautiful. Pitiful. Just show those. I love the eye by... The NZXT did the greatest job on this case. And we can plug it in the chassis fan with pump. Why not? To dare is to risk it all. And to do is to risk it all while daring. Guys, please like this video. Not so other people can see it. Just so I can know you've liked this video. And you've made it this far. Now, if you've liked it, you've probably not made it this far. Because if you did, you wouldn't like it. But that's fine. And just like that, this is not going to be a pretty PC. But I'm not trying to make it prettier. I'm trying to make it more compact from what it is now. Now, let's grab this cable. We haven't even set up our RGB yet. Which we do have. RGB is beautiful. This case actually only comes with red fans for the first time. So. Oh, this plugs in the... This is Molex. Dang it. We have to open the back plate. 
No. Okay, well, we've just voided all of our work because we have to open up the back. Wow, that's a fun sound. I don't know what it looks like. Is it pretty back here? Oh, no it is not. But that's besides the point. Basically, you guys are going to see the back as the cable management does not get better. Basically, now we can just shove everything back here, which is the best, the best kind of shoving. Everything. Repress it. We repress our, our memories. Now, it's actually really disappointing that we broke our double fan thing. But all is forgiven in post-editing. There we go. Now, basically, this comes under that. It's a lot of weaving. See, even I've built a lot of PCs. Look, I'm struggling, but guess what? I'm confident. I'm confident I've built some PC before. And I'm just I'm just confidently doing it. That's all there is to it. You just be as confident as you can be, even if you're building it as bad as you can be. You wanna here's the thing. You wanna be careful with confidence. Not be careful when you have confidence. I mean be careful but have confidence. Be careful not to just oh I'm so confident I'm gonna break everything. But, you know, be confident, you know, but be careful not to break stuff. Just, you know, be like, okay, let me plug in this plug. But be confident, you know, push things in. Make sure things actually go in the way they're supposed to. Let's plug in our power switch, which is always on the top two. Right there. Power switch. I never plug in anything else for front panel connectors because I'm useless as a human. Now. I don't have the sleds. Here we go. Coincidentally, we just have a sled right here. So let's, we'll do SSD later. We have our boot SSD. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, we plugged that in, that in. Our GPU, our fans are plugged in. By definition, they're plugged in. Everything else is hidden. Uh, RGB, yes. RGB is the most important thing to this build. I hope we have a Molex connector plugged in in here, or there's going to be a severe disappointment. I'm talking as if I'm wearing a lavalier, and I'm not. I'm hoping there's a Molex in here. Molex is a connect... Oh, it's on this side. Hello! Molex, yes! There's a Molex! No! I missed you. Alright. Let's plug in all of our RGB into the RGB. Man, is this even working? This is disappointing. Like, I always think I'm going to get better. It takes a while. It takes a while of not building the same exact PC to get really good at it. But, nonetheless, we just keep doing it. Look at that. I'm already up to RGB. I don't know how fast I've been going. Too fast. Too furious. Yeah! Again, like, trust what I say, not what I do, basically. Because I'm bad at listening to directions, including my own. This can go right up here. Good. So we actually, we have a lot of room behind our measure board, which is the perfect place to put all this stuff. Now, I don't have RGB headers on my motherboard, but if I did, I would be plugging them into those. We, we won't even bother with that for now. Make sure that's screwed in. Now, our graphics card. Ooh, let's do our SSDs first. Really, really simple. Let's bring this over here so you guys can see the SSDs. Try not to press any of your cords. They're very important. You need them all. Now, SSDs. I, I use SSDs only and external hard drives for this build. 
um, installed in the chassis. Now, graphics card. This part you should be very careful. Now, no more less no less careful than any other part. But this part, be especially wary of of what you're doing. Now, make sure you've taken out the proper expansion slots in your case. You'll see that in other videos. And basically, grab your card. Make sure the lock on the PCI Express slot is open, and just line up. So they line it up, shove it in. There should be. There's always a little bit of crunching. Now try not to let it lean, because this card can and might. It will take your motherboard with it if it is like falling, because they are very heavy. Best way to counter that, just hold it up get a friend maybe and just <laughs> who's got friends and just screw it in screw it in real nice and tight GPU support braces are recommended now basically plug in your 8 pin which is a 6 and a 2 in some cases most cases and I mean cases like, you know, case by case, not like literally your case. Oh. Wow, that is crunchier than I would like. Crunchy as hell. Crunchy. Really, really crunchy. I'm trying to remember what else to do. Um, am I done? Did I just finish my computer without paying attention? Fans of... Oh, exhaust fan. Now, not the most important thing in the world, but definitely important. Um, I would like RGB... I don't think I have any RGB fans. I do, though, have some red fans. I'll, I'll grab a red fan. Still have one more header. Ah, oh, yes. Right, because this is for our exhaust fan. Now, basically, facing the inward, grab fan screws if you don't have them already. We forgot them. Fan screws, fan screws, very thick screws. There's one. That's really all you need. You need more than one. I don't have any more fan screws. Got it. Still going. You sure about that? Alright, basically, make sure you route your cable how you want it to go. I really just want it to kind of plug in. Plug it into the motherboard. Easy peasy lemon on the cake. Just like that. Oh, how did I do this before? I think that's the real question. Did I have it come through here? And then back through here. I'm doing all the things you shouldn't do. Just like so. And then screw it on. We need an actual screwdriver. I fix it. I love your screwdrivers. But for like actual workloads that require like torque. A real Phillips head masterpiece goes a long way. I've had this screwdriver for a while. So Besides the new, um, believe it or not, 
you may not expect this, but besides the new uh, cooler that I'm using, the other one had a 120 millimeter rad on the back. Sucked. Besides the new cooler that I'm using, this is my original pre-built. This is a pre-built I bought a while ago. Now, let's try it. Let's turn it on. Um, I don't have a power plug over here. So we're going to put it on our desk where it's going to be sitting for a while, and we'll be right back. One sec. All right, guys. As you can see, it's here at our gaming uh, test set setup now. So we're going to plug it in right in front of you. You can't really hear me because the mic is already here, and I'm not. So let's just test it together. Let's plug the last things in and test it. Oh, God. This has been too long and too boring. The, this video has. All right. that on, turn on the power supply, turn it, turn it on, this is going to go really good or really bad. So it's silent, dusty as hell, silent, dry, lit up right away, that's a good sign. Now let's plug in a cable for display, let's pick one, uh, do you have a display port? We do. Hello, grab a card. Oh, of course, HDMI. <laughs> Squeaky. We got a display. Oh my, it boots right to Windows. It booted right to, that's it. We did it. My chair is gone, but we did it. Did you, it booted to Windows. I, I, I don't know if you saw it or not, but it just booted, we did it. Okay, you can, you can see that from there. It does, it is Windows. You can see the little rainbow. Uh, today's August 11th, if you want to check to make sure the uh, the date is right with what picture it is for Windows 10. But that's just it. Now we're just going to do some cable management uh, off camera, but that is it. I this, this angle's weird, but let's just sit down and chat for a sec. Um, this video has been long. If you've made it this far, say cucumber in the description so I know that you're the best. And really, this is just, yeah, it's been long. It has been a pretty bad video, right? But it does show you. It takes a while. It's a tedious process. I drop the CPU in the socket, and it, it works. It just still works. That is what's amazing. It just, it's, it's easy. You won't break it. If I didn't break a 1080 Ti 7700K build doing that, you shouldn't build it. You shouldn't break it either. So you should build, use this as confidence boost. Do not use this as your only build guide. Trust me, you'll want to watch Linus Tech Tips, J2 Sense, Bitwit, Paul's Hardware, Hardware Connects, literally anybody else but me. Um, I hope you liked this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.